you get the patient's award. Hello, my name is? Murdad. Oh, there we go. Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you. Um, in Luke 15, 19 through 31, you mentioned one time in the story of the rich man and Lazarus that the rich man had no name because on the unhappy side of Hades, you don't need a name. In Matthew 19, Mark 10, and Luke 18, there's another story of Jesus and the rich man. And we can assume that the rich man there didn't make it to heaven either because he didn't want to give up everything. My question is for family members who are not saved, and who will not have a name? Will we remember them? Ooh. If they no longer have a name. And if God himself says, I never knew you. Wow. That is a good question. How do you say it? Mir Mirdad. Mirdad. You also, now you get the patience award, get the husband award. I saw you with your arm around your wife. <laughs> You know, it's so rare that you notice it. But okay, let's go back. Well, I'll give you the short one. Yes, everybody will have a name, and, and I'll go through the passage with you so you don't have to stand so long. But everyone remembers. The rich man even knew who, who Moses and Abraham were, and he was there. And they lived, one, 1,400 years before him, and another one, 2,100 years before him. So there is in eternity, in hell, in Hades now, and in heaven for us, there is an amazing memory of, of our lives here. Now it's interesting that, that God edits out all the sins of our memory, but not theirs. And part of what what uh, it says in the scriptures in Mark and in other places about the worm dies not when you, when you hear about the grave, there is going to be, do you know how people regret stuff now? Can you imagine being able to regret stuff forever? I, I mean, I'm, sometimes I'm not sure, I mean, I believe in literal fire and hell, but I don't think the fire is going to be the worst part. I think the awareness do you know how people get so overcome with, with what horrible thing they did, they kill themselves? It's because they can't stand to think about what they did. Can you imagine not being able to end your conscious existence and be able to remember acutely well? In eternity, we're all going to have bodies that are resurrected. You understand that? The dead, in fact, let's just do this. If, if, I might as well just plod right through this. So uh, Merdad took us to uh, Luke 15. Let's go to uh, Luke 15 and, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Luke 16. Luke 16. I wrote that down wrong. Luke 16. And uh, just walk through, and I'm going to answer this for Merdad. Notice what it says uh, in verse 22. The beggar died. That's one that didn't have a name. Was was carried uh, into the angels to Abraham's bosom, and the rich man. I'm sorry, that's one that didn't is buried. So both of them, their physical bodies are gone, and being in torments in Hades, verse 23, he lifted up his eyes. That's uh, the nameless rich man, and saw. And here's number one. First of all, he's in torment, so he's got pain. So in eternity, we have feeling. Okay. We can feel. We experience the sensation, verse 23. And he lifted up his eyes. We, we have recognition of things, and, and our senses are still operating. Feeling, our, our sense of touch, and our sight. Those senses continue. And he saw Abraham, who lived 2,100 years before him, by the way, so he had some type of supernatural gifting. It's like a download. He knew who people were. Um, uh, there is some intuitive knowledge that we have. Afar off, so you can see distances and you recognize distances, and there is Lazarus, and he can recognize him. So you understand, we, we recognize people, and we know things that we didn't know on earth. And so verse 24, there's communication. And he cried and said, Father Abraham. Now this is on the curse side. Can you imagine 
when all of our senses, did you know everything we have is, is warped by sin? Our regenerative system of our body, our minds, everything else has been warped. Can you imagine when they're the way God designed them to be? How incredible. Adam named every animal. He had a mind he could tell which ones he'd seen, which one he hadn't, and he gave them all a different name. I mean, about the fourth one, I'd be calling them all, you know, strange things, strange things, strange thing, you know. And, and he named them all. So this mind. And so he cried out and said, Father Abraham, so he can communicate. Cool my tongue. He still has physical desires. There's still thirst and the desire to satisfy a, a physical desire. Verse 25, and Abraham said, son, remember. So there's the first answer. Memory continues. You understand that? In hell and in heaven, memory continues. That is phenomenal to think about. Aren't you glad the Lord will erase a lot of stuff? See, part of that wiping away all tears is that God removes sin. We will never answer for sin. We will never account for sin in eternity. Why? Not because God says, I just forgot it. You know, just like people say, forget it. No. God doesn't forget anything. He, he puts it on Christ's account. So all those sins are remembered in the sense that Jesus has, has judicially suffered don't you remember the fellow that, that uh, we baptized about a year and a half ago, whenever up there, and he said, he said that uh, Jesus died on the cross for my womanizing or whatever. He said it was, the, it was one of the most articulate testimonies you've ever heard. He said God treated Jesus like he was a womanizer and a, I don't know what he said, a boozer like he was before God saved him. In heaven, God's going to remove the memory from the redeemed, but the lost will remember in your lifetime, verse 25, you receive good things. So he's going to remember the good life he had. Likewise, Lazarus, evil things, but now he is comforted. You know what that means? Pleasures continue in heaven. You know, someone said, who wants to sit on a cloud with a harp? I don't know if there's going to be a lot of harping on clouds. Pleasures continue. <laughs> Pleasures continue. Did you know that God says that when we get to heaven, we are going to experience the marriage to Jesus Christ. Did you know in earth, one of the highest joys is marriage? One of the most pleasurable things God designed comes within marriage. Have you ever thought about that? And God talks about us going to heaven like we're engaged to be married. What? Pleasure continues. Uh, he is comforted. Pleasure is continuing, and you are tormented. Pain continues. And besides this, there is between us and you a great gulf. There are boundaries up there. And those who want to pass from here in verse 26 cannot. Beyond help is, is once a person gets to the grave, they're beyond help. And, and all that is, Jesus is telling us a lot. But, but look at verse 27. I beg you therefore, Father, the rich man says, that you would send him... You notice he doesn't even say, I don't even know if he knew, if the rich man knew Lazarus' name. He just says him. So he never met him. He just threw his food out the window to him or had the servants do it. And he was nameless only to the rich man, not to God. And send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers. He knew his family. He remembered his family. That he may testify to them, listen to this, lest they also come here. You know what that is? That's the voice from hell. That's the voice from the grave. The people in the grave are not doing what I used to hear when I grew up. They say, I would talk to my unsaved relatives, and they say, I'm going to go to hell and have fun with all my friends. Do you know what the people in hell are saying? I hope they don't come here. I hope they don't come here. Send someone. You know what the voice from the grave is? Send someone to witness to them. It's so bad, we would not wish this on anyone. 
That is very, very sobering. And then Abraham said to him, they have Moses. Now, just for a second, Abraham was born in approximately 2166 B.C. Moses was born in approximately 14, let's see, he was 80 at the Exodus, so he was born in approximately 1386 B.C. You notice there's about 800 years between those two men. And Abraham knew about Moses. And the rich man recognized Abraham. The rich man was, this story is about 30 A.D. So the rich man recognizes the 2,200-year-old person that there was no Facebook, no, no internet. And see the intuition, the, the knowledge level in eternity? It's amazing. But he said to him, Abraham said to him, they have, so Abraham knew events that happened after he died. Now that's another question people ask. Do people in heaven know anything about what's going on now? Abraham knew that Moses lived 700 years to 800 years after him, and he knew that Moses' writings were still in existence and people had access to them. And he knew all that from the grave, which is fascinating to think about. Uh, they have Moses and the prophets. So, I mean, I mean, wow, that's a lot. Let them hear them. Obviously, God is filling people in on what they need to be filled in on. And because we see the people in heaven cheering for some of the, you know, things that are happening, saying, come on, Lord, you know, how much longer are you going to hold back before you do this? See, they are tracking with the events that God allows them to know about. Um, Let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Verse 30, repent. The, The rich man down there in Hades headed to hell said the only way to escape this is to repent. Now, isn't that interesting? There are actually Christians that don't like that word. Actually, there's a theologian that says repentance is an unbiblical addition to the doctrine of salvation. He actually says that in the Ryrie Study Bible. You know what? Someone that's there said the only way you keep from getting there is repenting. Boy, that is an unvarnished gospel presentation if I ever heard one. Someone that missed it and said, don't miss it. The only hope is repentance. And so verse 31, but he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rises from the dead. Salvation comes only by hearing the word of God. If they will not hear isn't it interesting he didn't say read? He said hear. There's something about it that for a believer, we don't just read the Bible. We hear the voice of God. My sheep hear my voice. I heard Christ's voice in 1962 through the word of God, through a faithful mother sharing the gospel with me. So, but I've gotten a, lot, a long ways away from mere dads. What you ask is, uh, no name, will we have names in heaven? Will the lost have uh, names? Yes, they have names. They will remember their names. Their friends will remember their names. And I believe that if, if we went back to Revelation 20, when the books are opened, and I, you know, We'll never get our new members inducted if I keep going, so you'll have to tell me to quit. But there's one more thing. It says in Psalm 139 that our days are written in his book, and the same passage talks about he formed us. And so right down to our DNA, you know, the, the exact plans... Everything about us is in that double helix. And in that DNA, that's why this whole genetic 
you know, splicing, if you've been reading about what they're doing in China right now, you know, they're making goats that are, have thicker, and sheep that have thicker wool than any sheep have ever had, and they're making other animals have bigger legs, they're making beagles that have gigantic muscular legs so they can run further, and they're playing around with the DNA because this is the set of plans. And God says in his book, not only all of our days are written, but our unformed substance, which is really the specs. And so God, in his books, has the complete who you are, because he's going to reassemble everybody. If you think about that, everybody's in the dust. The Bible says those that sleep in the dust. It's not their spirits, their bodies are sleeping down there. And God's going to reassemble everybody. And they are going to in the body that Hitler raged around in and plotted his wickedness in that very same body that he had doused with oil and whatever they did and burn him up. That same body, he's going to be surprised. He's going to be in it. And he's going to stand in front of God. And God is going to say, I designed you. I know you from your mother's womb. And here's what you did in life. And here are all the times you rejected me. Because everyone that's ever lived, God has revealed himself to them. And he's going to say, this is all the bad stuff you did. I have a record of all of it. And you remember it. And this is how you rejected me. Depart from me, you cursed. Into the place I prepared for the devil and his angels. Not for you, Mr. Hitler. And Hitler will know his name, and he will remember Eichmann, he will remember Himmler, but he won't be palling around with them. He'll just be saying, I wish no one else came here. The voice from the grave, very sobering.